personal will versus divine will. People ask me whether reality creation requires effort. The question is usually asked by lazy people. People who are committed to their goal usually don't ask the question, does it require effort? You know, and if it requires effort, so what? <laughs> but in general, in, in the universe, in life, in nature, you first invest effort into something initially and the more effort you put into it, the easier it gets until you become comfortable with it and then you choose something new uh, with which to step out of your comfort zone. That's the way things work at mid-consciousness. You know, you start playing the piano and in the beginning it's mysterious, it's full of effort, but then you become better and better at it and it becomes effortless. And that's the beauty of life from effortful to effortless, okay? But there's more to the story, there always is. Um, at higher levels of consciousness, things become more and more effortless because you start understanding how life actually works and how the system here was lovingly set up. So at lower consciousness levels, it takes the most effort because you got to work your way out of the muck that you got yourself into through your choices. Okay, you're in this muck. And then mid-level, there's some effort, some effortlessness. High level is the most effortless because you understand divine will. So there's personal will and there's divine will. Uh, in short, personal will equals effort. Divine will equals effortlessness. So if you're in alignment with divine will, if you put your goals in alignment with divine will, they'll be more easily achieved. Let me first explain why divine will is effortless. You put a seed in the ground. What happens? It grows all by itself. It manifests by itself. No effort required and it just keeps growing and more keep growing. So the divine system is a self-sustaining system. Always has been, always will be. Whatever you put into the so-called dirt, it wants to grow. And all of nature is this way. All of nature is self-sustaining. It's divinely created. And the tragic comedy of humanity is that stuff that humans create tends not to be self-sustaining. In fact, there's not a single human creation that is self-sustaining. And it often falls short of divine brilliance, you know, so-called science. Take, for example, chemotherapy, where in the process of so-called healing, uh, you destroy the entire body. You know, that's not real healing. And that's very typical of personal will versus divine will. There's a divine way of healing cancer uh, as already implemented by nature since forever and used by indigenous cultures since forever. And then there's the so-called science way of doing it, uh, which is the personal will way. So human solutions that go against nature, go against the trajectory of nature, go against the way things are already going, the way things were already set up, they cost much more money, take much more time, uh, require much more work, and the results are often still mediocre. Whereas divine solutions uh, require much less effort, They've already been established since forever and always will be. And the results are often very satisfying. So the effort required is not much. Find the seed you like and put it into the right soil and then leave it alone. You've already done your part. It'll grow by itself. Now if you keep 
going to the soil and digging it up to check whether it's grown in your impatience, what do you think is going to happen? It's never going to grow. Things grow not because of human intervention, but in spite of them, you know, and they even grow when we try to prevent them to grow. We put sheets over our lawn so that the grass stop, stops growing and it grows through. Even when we put concrete over the ground, somehow the grass and the plants and the weeds find a way through. So this self-sustaining system was set up lovingly to your benefit and provides you with free food, free oxygen, uh, free energy, free water, free everything. However, you were also given free will, <laughs> which means, means you can create your own things, uh, you can invest your own effort, and have a shot at it too. And that is also loving. Even though your free will messes a lot of things up, it also brings forth, forth a lot of creative stuff, a lot of fascinating stuff, and loads of fun. You know, you have uh, already existing chemi chemicals, for example, and with your free will, you can take one already existing, already created chemical and another, put them together creatively, and boom, something brand new will be created, similar to when two humans come together and new life is created and a baby is born. You know, I'm surprised I even have to explain these things in a way they're supposed to be known. And the fact that they're not known tells me that something is way, way off these days. These are normal things. These are things that are normal to me, but they seem so surprising to the people I tell them to, and they scratch their heads. Really? Effortless? I can have things effortlessly? Yeah, you sure can. <laughs> you know, as I say, success is so easy, it's comical. I have a video with that title. You might want to check it out. Success is so easy, it's comical. Published it a few years back. It's effortless. It's easy. So you plant physical seeds into the ground and you plant spiritual seeds into your heart. Whatever values, goals, ideas you plant in your heart manifest naturally and effortlessly. The only problem is that things that are planted or divinely created take time. Okay, and we know the ego is impatient and wants it now, convenience now, got to have it now. And people always ask me, how quickly, how quickly can I manifest it? You know, they don't understand uh, divine creation. It does take time. You plant a seed. And while it's effortless, it does take time. You plant a seed into your heart. You let it go. Let it grow by itself. Instead of constantly checking, you trust that it's now growing, that it's been planted. But it does take time to fully manifest and bloom. But when it manifests, man, it blooms so effortlessly, so easily. The thoughts, ideas, and goals that you plant into your heart will effortlessly manifest in your heart, not in your mind. You can't just say, okay, I believe that I'm going to achieve this, that this is true. Um, you got to feel it. That's what I mean by in your heart. At whatever you bring close to your heart and feel, in this region, for example, manifests. Don't you know that your impatience is what creates the unsatisfactory results? The ego, the I need to do it myself, I know better. Now, in spite of everything that I said, in my own life, I apply a mixture of personal will and divine will. I've said this before, but as you... Swim with the stream, it's all effortless. The stream that was so lovingly provided. But when you swim against the stream, that's when you grow your strength, your power, your personal power. You see, ego is not a bad thing, as taught uh, among New Agers, and the self-improvement industry, um, which is full of falsehoods, you know, such as uh, ego is bad, um, yeah, I, mean, I mean, there's different types of teachings and different types of people. And let's say, let's call them the New Agers here on the one hand. 
um, on the far end of this spectrum, they're like, oh, it's all divine will. It's let go, let's release, let's give it to the universe. And that's just as limited as the other polarity here. Let's say the bodybuilder. The bodybuilder is like, uh, it's all my will, personal will. I got to do it. I got to work hard and all that nonsense. Okay? And neither, neither of these positions is entirely accurate and it's horribly imbalanced. So you want both. You want to learn both. And even though I have divine will at my disposal, I'm given free will to become stronger and more sovereign. So people who do not create anything themselves and have no views of their own and no projects of their own, um, if you only leave everything to divine will, you tend to drift off into apathy. Okay, then you can uh, live among the aborigines and have no clothing and no shelter. Um, and, and that's great. You know, you have other advantages. You can live in dream time and you can see energy directly and you can see how everything is uh, an illusion here. But there tends to be apathy. And if you live the other way, um, the personal will way, you tend to separate from source, you know, and you become a workaholic or a materialist or a scientist or whatever. <laughs> you see the two extremes that exist in this world? So, um, yeah, you want to balance the two. Some of it is divine will, some of it is personal will, and that's the way it's meant to be. Too much uh, planning cuts off the spontaneity of the soul, and too little planning reduces personal will. You see, you need a balance, a balance in everything, everything in moderation, including moderation. So, in my life, I usually have a hands-off approach, and I let people be who they are, let my students do as they wish, uh, let my family do as they wish, live and let live, let my government do as it wishes. That's the hand-off approach. Uh, but when things start sliding <laughs> in my coaching or in my family or in the government, it's time for me to take back the reins and take control and exercise personal will. I can't just always let slide and let go. Sometimes I'm called to take responsibility and take that discipline. When things go well, it's more of a letting go. When things don't go well, you need a bit more control. Does that make sense? That's what uh, happens in society as well, in politics, in the economy, in everything. A hands-off approach versus a hands-on approach. It's like breathing in, breathing out, controlling, letting go, going with the stream, going against the, the stream. Life is both. It's not one or the other. Now, how do you know whether you're pursuing a goal that's divinely willed, pre-planned, in alignment with your soul, versus ego, versus personal will? And again, you now understand I have nothing against ego and personal will. Okay, it's fine. I'm not judging it. I'm just discerning. How do you know the difference? Well, I'll give you one example, and you figure out the rest. I don't have to spoon feed everything, right? Um, my wife says that I work like a madman. She says, um, ever since I know you, all you do is work, 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 work. You're such a hard worker. And that statement takes me by surprise because I consider myself lax and a little bit lazy. And, uh, you know, I think I could do so much more. So my perception of myself is that I don't work much. I feel like I work about one hour a day and she feels like I work eight hours a day. So how come the discrepancy? Where does that come from? Well, it comes from the fact that I truly enjoy what I'm doing and don't consider it work. 
And that means it's in alignment with what my soul should really be doing, in alignment with divine will. And therefore, more effortless, and therefore giving me just the right amount of abundance. Now, if I wanted more abundance, my ego could come in and put in more effort, okay? But going with divine will in my profession means I'm satisfied with the abundance I get. And I'm not trying to make more. Uh, if you go by divine will, you always have more than you need. On the other hand, when I mow the lawn, I do feel tired afterwards. I do feel exhausted. And that means mowing the lawn is probably not in accordance with divine will. And if I wanted to become more divine in that area, uh, I'd have to outsource it. But I don't do that. Because as I said, there's also some free choice things that I do, that I choose, um, to develop my personal strength. I play tennis. I feel tired after tennis. That's probably not in alignment with my overall life's vision, but having incarnated here, I still get to choose. I still get to exercise my free will, and I've chosen to play tennis. And that's good, because it develops many, many skills that I need for my job. So this balance of effort and effortlessness runs throughout my whole life and makes my life just fantastic. You know, when I play tennis, I don't strain quite as hard as others. I don't put in quite as much effort. I see them putting in all this seriousness, taking the game so seriously. Uh, but I don't do that. And as a result, I don't injure myself as much as they do. In fact, I, don't, I hardly injure myself at all. And I can play longer than them because I haven't put in quite that much. I've put in just the right amount of effort, having found the sweet spot where I do feel tired afterwards, but not to the point of feeling wounded and exhausted. When I learn a language, I focus, but I don't narrow focus. I don't over-focus. I have a playful time. When I do seminars, you'll see how I play with attention. I want it to be effortful, and I want you to put in your own effort. I want it to be challenging and confronting. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. But I don't want it to be too much effort and too confronting. And I don't want it to be confronting to the point of trauma, right? So um, it should also be playful and fun. That's the sweet spot. There's some growth, there's some personal will, there's some free will, but not to the point of injury. I hold firm viewpoints and opinions in, of many things in life, but they're not so firm that they become fixated or fanatic. If there, new evidence comes up, I can change. And I've changed my views many times in life. But my views are not so unfirm that they change every day with every new event that comes in the news. Okay, So they're fixed enough for me to have a stable standing in life, to have firm values in life, but these values are not so fixed that I become stubborn or narrow-minded or inflexible. The truth is that most people are actually weak in both personal will and divine will. They can't focus for long. That means they lack personal will. Their opinions are usually formed by whatever goes on around them. That means they lack personal will. They say, well, I can't start this project until I feel like it. That means they lack personal will. I can start a project anytime because I've trained my personal will. Huge advantage. And on the other hand, there are people that don't understand that most things in life um, 
are fairly easy to acquire. Health, the basics, okay? Health and money or goods are fairly easy to acquire if you're aligned uh, uh, with, with divine will. It is the will of the divine that you are abundant. And if you have any lack, you don't understand that. You're not in alignment with reality. So there's really two ways of reaching your goal. It's working like crazy, working really hard, or planting a seed in your heart. And that's what reality creation is really about. It's about planting a seed in your heart. Most people understand the personal will way of reaching goals, but very few understand that it could be so much more easy. One more thing I need to mention is that the ego is actually addicted to work, almost programmed to work, um, and that some people don't gain satisfaction from effortless creation. So they want to take credit for the creation, so they won't allow it to be effortless. They won't allow abundance to be effortless. They want to take credit for it. You know, they want to say, I built each and every aspect of this myself. And nobody else did it. And that's their addiction. That's the addiction of the ego. Again, I'm not saying that anything is wrong with it. I'm just telling you this so that you can feel and discern. Okay? If you're wondering why things don't happen more easily in your life. They don't take satisfaction in just planting the seed and it happens all by itself. And they feel like, well, I didn't do this, so it's not meaningful. So they think. Okay? If you understand what I just said, that could be a huge life changer right there. And then you realize, okay, Maybe I could allow some of the gifts that are already laid out for me, some of that grand feast that is already laid out for me, to be okay and be grateful for it. Be grateful that I have access to all of this knowledge, all of these resources, all of this life, all of this energy. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel and share this video far and wide. My name is Fred Dotson. Have a nice day.